welcome to the NOA Symposium. Could you please give us a brief description of your role and what it involves? Yep, no problem, Jeremy. So, uh, so I'm Wayne Butterfield. I, I work at O2, a 10-year veteran there now. Uh, current role is, is uh, responsible for digital service innovation and transformation. Uh, been working with BPOs for the last 10 years in various other roles, um, uh, most notably head of back office where I pioneered using RPA. How is robotic process automation currently upsetting traditional outsourcing models? Will it do so more in the future? I think for me, you know, the, the, the key thing that changed as a buyer of outsourcing is um, it's no longer about how many bums and seats can an outsourcer provide. It's more around, it, it gives a, a new way for an outsourcer to innovate. Um, I, I long for the day when a, a BPO won't tell me that they have 50,000 FTE doing a billion transactions. I long for the day when they say, I do a billion transactions with 100 FTE. Um, I think with the uh, aid of robotics, which I don't think is a particularly complex technology, I think it really has the uh, long-term ability to, to transform, certainly pricing for, for a buyer of outsourcing services. Um, I think the uh, offshore centres have probably got more to worry about than the than, than nearshore and, and voice-centric BPOs. Uh, I think it's really got a, an opportunity to transform at, at least back office transactions in, in most organisations. Recent HFS research has suggested that fewer buyer executives currently see robotics as mission critical. Just 11% in North America and 7% in Europe. Why do you think that is? I think it's because robotics still, for most people, most of the right people, is a bit of an unknown. Um, so I've presented at a number of events and the the type of people that are at the event aren't necessarily the people that have the problems that robotics solves. Um, they're seeing robotics as, uh, st some people are still seeing robotics as a robotic arm on a desk, an actual robot, and they're, they're not understanding the concept and also what it's trying to achieve. So I think there's a lot of unknown. I think the poll earlier on showed that uh, there is still uh, the, the biggest reason for not adopting new technologies is because people just don't really understand what they are. Um, I've been pioneering in robotics for nearly five years. I get it. I am still one of the only people, though, that has a credible story that can talk about it. How does O2 currently utilise RPA? Um, so we've got a fairly substantial operation. Um, I helped transform a, a, a 1.2 million transaction operation, 400 heads, using RPA. We now complete nearly half a million transactions a month. We have 165 robotic FTE, uh, and we complete some really mission critical processes. Uh, SIM swaps, probably the, the one that is a standout, it's a core process for our business. When a customer swaps phone, when a customer swaps mobile numbers, the SIM is the key to them having service. And using robotic automation, we've transformed the SIM swap process something that used to take up to 24 hours and as a result have several repeat calls by customers now takes less than 10 minutes. Um, so you know, certainly for mission critical processes, not only has it saved us a load of cash, um, we've actually transformed the customer experience on a lot of our processes as well. And it's not just SIM swaps. Uh, we've, we've looked at uh, finance processes, uh, access control, uh, as well as other customer service processes. So we have uh, around 15 core processes, around 40 sub-processes, all automated, uh, and, and say churning through nearly half a million transactions a month is a, uh, one of the biggest RPA deployments in the world, as far as I'm aware. In conclusion, why should those in business process outsourcing adopt RPA as an end solution? Um, for me, I, I think as a buyer of outsourcing, I wouldn't be wanting to speak to a BPO that wasn't adopting new technologies um, I think long gone are the days of uh, a, a BPO just being able to put bums on seats and offer a competitive price. Um, it's not about, it's not for me whether the outsourcing industry should adopt it, it's if the outsourcing industry doesn't adopt it, buyers of outsourcing will potentially look at alternatives. So there are already valid alternatives. Rather than outsourcing your back office offshore, why not just automate it using software in the UK? You, you've brought back, you know, there's, I've certainly done a lot of reshoring of process. That process has been automated, uh, but I've certainly started bringing processes back from offshore to, to nearshore locations and automating them. Um, you know, there is, there's definitely a, an understanding 
that using robotics and UK FTE, you could receive um, really competitive pricing in certain parts of the UK that would be as competitive as certain offshore providers. So I think there's, there's definitely the market is definitely ripe for um, for a change. I think buyers of outsourcing are uh, always looking for a cheaper alternative. I think the fact that this is cheaper and is also uh, more efficient and also more accurate ticks a lot of boxes for buying buyers of outsourcers. Uh, and I think it's it's a case now of BPOs either adopting this type of technology or starting to see many of the current contracts that they have come to an end and not be renewed.